face, I guess. So it's kind of weird since my commissioners are in back of me, but um, Al was first elected in 2006. After serving eight years in District 4, he was elected to Countywide District 7 in 2014. During his first years in office, Commissioner Higginbotham focused on three things. He promised the community he would bring civility to the board, he would focus on the budget, and he would work on environmental issues. He spearheaded the Our Budget Matters process, which created greater citizen input into the budget. He championed the passage of ordinances related to dog training, sinkhole assistance, and an incentive for the agricultural community to be more efficient with water usage. When Commissioner Higginbotham served as chairman in 2011, his focus expanded to economic development. Under his leadership, the Tampa Hillsboro Economic Development Corporation, called EDC, was formed and funded, launching a larger economic development presence for our county. He was instrumental in courting businesses to relocate to Hillsborough County, which created jobs for our residents. He traveled to or met with representatives from 34 countries. Wow. Which has, I knew he went to a lot of countries, didn't know it was 34, which has resulted in countless businesses expanding to our community. Commissioner Higginbotham helped establish the German American Chamber of Commerce headquarters in Tampa which is still thriving today. He also brought the International Indian Film Academy Awards, Bollywood, to Tampa in 2014, the first time it was held in the United States. Commissioner Higginbotham, with his, with his calming presence, collaborative spirit, and I'll add positive outlook, worked on improving relations with a number of communities in Hillsborough County. He created cooperation between the county and the three cities, fostering partnerships in a way we had not experienced before. He recognized Plant City in the Florida Strawberry Festival for the first time, which still continues with the current District 4 Commissioner. As a matter of fact, Commissioner Higginbotham hosted the International Consular Corporation to the Strawberry Festival, introducing them to the agricultural industry leaders and working on ways to mutually benefit both stakeholders. In 2015, Commissioner Higginbotham helped create the cricket field at Evans Park, which has grown to 40 adult teams. I did not know this, because I, when you first brought up crickets, cricket, <laughs> not crickets, but cricket fields, I thought, what is that sport? And, um, but now it's grown to 40 adult teams and 30 kids teams, and they're playing every single season. Rick Valdez. And they're gonna play at the, they're gonna play at the new sportsplex. Yes. So throughout his tenure, he has served as chaplain, vice chairman, and chairman of the Board of County Commissioners. He has represented our board as chairman of the Affordable Housing Advisory Board and the Public Transportation Commission. He served on the Hillsborough River Interlocal Board, the Florida Aquarium Board, the Agency on Bay Management, and was chairman of the Environmental Protection Commission. In a speech to the EDC, the Economic Development Corporation in 2010, Al said, I've overcome long odds and learned in the process that perseverance, integrity, and unwavering commitment pays un well, unbelievable dividends. Al, I know that you have all these attributes, and Hillsborough County receives the dividends of your efforts. I also want to mention what a great leader you are, how much those who work for you really appreciate you. In fact, of the eight legislative aides who have worked with you over the years, six are here today to celebrate you. In the room today are Jess Johnson. Come on, everybody's got to stand up. Andy Taylor, keep standing. You guys got to be a group. Seth Whiteman, Matt Henderson, Deanna Hurley, Ellie Rodriguez, 
and they all said how much you have impacted them. And they wish you the very best today. And now I want to direct everybody's attention to the monitors. We're going to present a special video highlighting your time here. Well, Al, I cannot believe that you are going to be leaving the County Commission. And I just want to say, first of all, thank you to the County Commission for allowing me to be a part of this video and to my friend Al Higginbotham. Uh, thank you for an amazing eight year run and a, and a relationship that has gotten stronger and stronger over the years. Um, eight years ago when I became the mayor, uh, you called me to the County Commission and, and extended the hand of friendship as the chairman. And I think that was the beginning of a special time between the city and the county. And it was a relationship that has gotten better, that has gotten stronger, hasn't been without its hiccups, but at the end of the day, we all recognize that we are here to serve the people of this community. And it was your steady leadership, it was your grace, it was your dignity, it was your calm demeanor and that I think has been a, a uh, part of that amazing success story. Now, I know you're going on to, to ride in that RV f all over the country for the next, uh, next couple decades, and I just wanted to tell you, um, it's been fun. You've been my friend. What most people don't realize is that you and I still have coffee every month um, at that fine dining institute, Zelda's. Uh, it's been something that I treasure, something I look forward to. We gossip, we laugh, we tell stories, uh, but we enjoy each other's friendship. And so to you and Devin, um, thanks for being my friend. Uh, thanks for an amazing job and know this, Al, uh, and I've traveled the whole world with you. I want you to understand that you did exactly what public servants ought to do. And that is that you left Hillsborough County in better shape than it was given to you. Good job, my friend. Uh, the cowboy is leaving the stage now, and I couldn't be prouder of you. I'm going to join you in a couple months, so save me a little caboose on the side of that RV that, uh, that uh, I can ride along with you, and uh, I wish you all the best. You've been a good friend, and you've served this community well. Thanks. Take care, buddy. I'll see you on the road. Hey, Al. Congratulations for your 12 years of service to Hillsborough County. You did a phenomenal job. I know that you were a guardian of the taxpayers' dollars, not most... most politicians, whether it's local, state, or federal, don't seem to think that's important anymore. But you were steadfast in your belief that government shouldn't grow faster than people's ability to pay for it. I have fond memories of our friendship and of your loyal support of my campaigns. I'll never forget in 1994, you hosted an event at your beautiful home and Marge Schott showed up, uh, the former owner of the Cincinnati Reds, and lit up a cigarette in your living room. And I thought you and Devin were about ready to kill her. But uh, that was what Mark Schott did all the time, so I guess everybody tolerated it. I hear you're hitting, hitting the road. I don't know what kind of motorhome you're using, but um, I hope you enjoy your time uh, reconnecting with your phenomenal family and uh, enjoying the beauty of our incredible country. God bless you for your service, my friend. Hey, Dad, uh, congratulations on your retirement. So proud of you. Hi, Dad. Congratulations on retirement. This is like the seventh time I've tried to make this video, but I keep crying in the middle of it and looking like a mess. Um, so I just want to say all the best. I'm so excited to hear about whatever you and Mom get up to, all the crazy adventures and where she drags you to. Um, I'm sure you guys are going to have so much fun in this new chapter of your life. Thank you so much for always setting an amazing example for Alan and I, even if we didn't follow it real well. We always looked up to you. So I hope you have a great retirement party and I will talk to you soon. Love you. My knees both pop like pistol shots My face has lines and my hands have spots And my eyebrows look like some old witch's broom I sip in sure instead of wine 4.30 is now my supper time Remind me why I came into this room I got receding hair, I got receding gums My doctor can't be 21 when did my favorite snack become a prune? 
long underwear that's how i roll i once was cool now i'm just cold remind me why i came into this room getting old's not for the faint of heart my resume may soon include greeter at walmart well, I may not have a hip tattoo, but my hip replacement scar is cool. Remind me why I came into this room. are hairy my cholesterol count is downright scary i recall when movies came with a cartoon my sugar's high my blood pressure sore and my back is screaming and my ears are roaring remind me why i came into this room hi hi your name al higginbotham do solemnly swear that I will support. Do solemnly swear that I will support. Protect and defend the Constitution. To protect and defend the Constitution. And government of the United States. And government of the United States. And of the state of Florida. And of the state of Florida. And the Hillsborough County Charter. And the Hillsborough County Charter. That I am duly qualified. That I'm duly qualified. To hold office. To hold office. Under the Constitution of the state. Under the Constitution of the state and that I will well and faithfully perform that I will well and faithfully perform the duties of county commissioner the duties of county commissioner on which I am now about to enter on which I am now about to enter so help me god so help me god congratulations thank you judge henry ford is the one who said if i'd asked people what they wanted they would have said a faster horse and sometimes you have to step out of that circle and you have to uh, realize that there is future there is vision through innovation. Well, it's been many hours, a lot of hard work, and dedication, knowing that working together we can make a difference. And that's what we've done here. To look into the eyes of the people with IFA and the actors and the actresses and support uh, uh, staff, and let them see our hearts. I want you to look into my eyes and see my heart. Look into your eyes and see your heart. I can look into your eyes and see your heart. Uh, looking into your one another's eyes and seeing your heart. But you look into my eyes and see my heart. Look into my eyes and see my heart. We look into your eyes and see your heart. I'm proud of this community. I'm proud of what our county does to help people. I hope in my 12 years here that in some modest and humble way, I've made a difference. As I look into your eyes and see your heart, I hope you see mine. You know that I care and love each and every one of you. Thank you very much. When some pe someone says there's something you can't do or they place obstacles in front of you, know that you can patch it up. You can find a way to do it. And I know one thing, if I can do it, you can too. Well, that was a fantastic video and I'm trying to hold back the tears here, but now we have a special gift for you, Al. And on behalf of all of us here on the board, all of your commissioners, we wanted to give you something to use in your travels. As many of you know, um, Commissioner Higginbotham, and I'm gonna call him Al today, and his wife, Devin, are going to travel out west next year, exploring the Grand Canyon, Big Sur, Yosemite, and more. We usually get a plaque as a gift, but we knew that there probably wouldn't be too many walls in that motor home, um, and you probably, it just wouldn't fit with your new life on the road. So we're excited to present you today with a hiking stick that's engraved with a special note that reads, thank you for guiding us in the right direction.
thank you. And this is very meaningful, even more so than a plaque. And I will keep this always. <laughs> and it's lightweight. OK, so we do need to gather for a photo, but I think we'll let the commissioners say their words now, and then we'll gather uh, for a photo um, to say a few words. And um, Commissioner Miller is on the phone, and he does want to say a few words also. So let's start with Commissioner Hagan. Thank you, Madam Chair. I want to start out by first saying what, what an, an outstanding video. Um, that staff put together, and I commend I commend them for uh, for, for doing that. Um, as the meeting was going on this morning, I wrote down a lot of things because I didn't want to I didn't want to leave anything out. And uh, unfortunately, um, Commissioner Merman stole a lot of my thunder uh, from Sorry. her comments there, but that's 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 understood. But Al, I just want to say it's been such a pleasure uh, serving with you the past 12 years. Um, you've been an outstanding district and countywide commissioner. In fact, you're only the third commissioner uh, to ever go from a district seat to become a countywide commissioner. Um, we have not always been on the same side of every issue, um, but I've always had a tremendous amount of respect uh, for you and how you conducted yourself on this dais. Um, your votes were never personal. Uh, you have such a strong set of core beliefs. Um, and what impressed me is that you never wavered on them. Uh, I always know that you voted your conscience and what you believed in your heart was what's best for our community. Um, you are a Southern gentleman. And I, can, I can't tell you how many times that I've been somewhere or been around you and someone has approached you uh, and said, Commissioner Higginbotham, and the first words out of your mouth are, call me out. Um, and as was pointed out in the video, and again, I had written this down before that I saw the video. I always enjoyed it when you'd say, look into my eyes and you could see my heart. And I think that that speaks volumes to the man you are. Uh, you are a fiscal conservative and a budget hawk. Uh, you champion the county spending cap, which was I th the first one in the state, maybe one of the first ones in the nation. Um, your leadership has gone a long way toward Hillsborough County uh, achieving and maintaining a AAA credit rating from all three credit agencies. Um, as was pointed out this morning, um, you had performed outstanding work with the EDC and Visit Tampa Bay um, with your commitment to expanding manufacturing and on the international front. You were front and center in placing us on the international stage with Bollywood. I've always been a big supporter of parks and recreation, and as Commissioner Merman uh, pointed out, particularly with providing opportunities to expand cricket at Evans Park, and then also with the new Sportsplex, which was configured um, at your um, request to ensure that cricket tournaments could be played there. Um, personally, I'm one of, uh, I've always been one of the less vocal commissioners, so I truly respect your style at not rambling on and on um, when you speak. Uh, you say what you mean and you mean what you say. Um, as a result, you always knew where you stood. Um, that says a lot about you, and the best compliment that I can uh, give you is that you're a consummate professional. And we will miss you, and I wish you and Devin the very best in your retirement. Commissioner Chris, you're recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. I first met Al, I guess it was over 30 years ago, and it was at a fraternity alumni function. We're both brothers of the same college fraternity, Sigma Chi, and uh, you had graduated a few years before I, but you were still interested in being active with the, uh, with the brotherhood. And I remember that conversation and how we shared a lot of common interests at the time. The part of you that I want to talk about is the inspirational man that you are. You've had a tremendous challenge to have to overcome. When you got injured on your, when you were out hunting and you were lying there for nearly a day before somebody found you, 
Um, after all the surgery, they determined you would probably never walk again and that you would be wheelchair bound for the rest of your life. And you refused to accept that. You refused to accept the fact that you couldn't be who you wanted to be. And you took it upon yourself through your faith and your determination to pull yourself up and out of your circumstances. And I believe that from that, you learned and now you preach that you can be more than your circumstances, despite if you're a, someone poor living in a poor household, whether you're physically, mentally, emotionally challenged, whether you're in any kind of situation where you'd want to feel sorry for yourself, you've always been an inspiration preaching you can be more than your circumstances. Take control of your life. And I know for me and my family and my friends, that has resonated. And I know six years ago when my daughter was born and they thought my wife was dying and my daughter was dead at the birth, I could hear those words in my head, take in charge of your circumstances. And everyone has said the great things you've done here at the board. Before you got here, you were a staunch advocate for ensuring that people's rights were upheld, especially in cases of capital punishment. And you would walk the hallways in our capital year after year, um, advocating for competent counsel and competent representation and a competent process to ensure that people's rights were upheld and that no one was ever executed in this state without having had multiple tests of their trial. Um, I had to keep an extra desk in my office and an extra easy chair because that was your spot in between meetings. <laughs> and I always enjoyed those conversations. Um, you've been a tremendous inspiration here and a very steady hand. Um, almost like a parent, at least for me. Every once in a while when I get a little out of hand, you would firmly remind me of the boundaries and bring me back home. And I have always appreciated that. I remember the first time I visited you and Devin at your home and we had a wonderful country dinner. I was, I wouldn't say shocked, but amazed. He has, I guess, over a hundred trophies from your hunting every kind of critter imaginable stuffed and in his house. Even in the bathroom, I'm sitting there staring at an otter. I, you know, all I could think of is, I'll be done in a minute. <laughs> it's holding the toilet paper. <laughs> but so, you know, he has a great sense of humor as some of those photos in, in, in the, in the show that we just saw reflected because here you come across as you know very firm and very strict and every once in a while funny will pop out but really in his personal life the man has an incredible sense of humor and a very very loving heart you are truly a loving caring compassionate conservative and a wonderful human being you and your wife Devin and I love you and I will miss you and you'll be out on your murder home and I'll be out on my boat but um, we'll both be traveling trails. Happy trails, my friend. Thank you, Commissioner White. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, Al is your successor in the District 4 seat. I just want to say I've had some big shoes to fill, and you know there are many out there that, that admire you a, a great deal. You've been an outstanding public servant. Um, you know, not only out in, in District 4, but in transitioning to a countywide commissioner, you know, and keeping the best interests of this entire county um, in mind. I can appreciate your calming demeanor, your statesmanship, and, and how serious you are about, about making good public policy. You're an outstanding policymaker. I appreciate your years of leadership and roles that... Uh, uh, have ranged far and wide in positions like chairman of the REC and, of course, you know, to your current role as a county commissioner. And I just want to say that uh, I wish you and Devin uh, much happiness in your travels. 
I hope you have uh, a very fulfilling retirement. I know you will. And uh, I wish you both safe travels as well. Yep. Commissioner Kemp, you're recognized. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Hagan, uh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Higginbotham and I have a very special relationship. Um, we're the only two commissioners here at the uh, dais uh, who uh, have run against each other. And we all know the ending to that story, he won. <laughs> Um, but it was a good campaign. We focused on issues and our honest differences. I was grateful that he was always a gentleman and in the very truest sense of that word. He's always been very kind and thoughtful. I think about when I received a threat for a position I'd taken and he called me at home that night to make sure that I felt safe and I appreciate that thoughtfulness. And while I know we all kind of keep politics in the background of uh, these farewells, um, I'd like to recognize, and I think this will be okay with um, Commissioner Higginbotham, his maverick side, um, on one very contentious issue uh, in particular, and I'm sorry, to, but I thought his, I just struck me his statement that he made that morning. I just uh, didn't forget it on the Confederate monument. Um, Commissioner Higginbotham, from the beginning, clearly and unequivocally supported the monument. And um, I wrote this before I saw the, the video, but I was touched by his statement because I felt it came so much from his heart. And I wanted to um, ask you if I gave you a copy because I pulled it off um, the transcript. If you, if you could just read that and, and share it again if you're up for that rather than me read it. Certainly. And Devin, are you hearing all this? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. I too was in line to make the second for the original motion. I'm not going to support the substitute made by the chairman. The reason reasons are that, as I stated back when we had uh, debates, I think before you were on the road on the board, Commissioner Miller, to support the Confederate Month or Confederate Day. And my reason then is that it is to present a hurt. It brings back a dark time in our history. I'll never uh, pretend to know what it's like to be treated differently because of the color of my skin. I do know what it's like to be treated differently because of a disability. I do know that it's uh, what it's like to be treated uh, differently because people don't think I'm as smart. People don't think I'm as capable. Uh, I have an empathy and understanding for those people, the way they worship, the basis of faith, but I cannot support the substitute motion and be happy to place my vote when it comes back around. Thank you. And I did remember that and wanted to hear you hear you do that, read that again. Um, I've also felt a connection when you shared with me about your children. Um, your, and I'm glad to see them on the video. Uh, your son, who you told me is a ranger out west, while well, my son is also out west and really has no permanent address at this time. He's a wilderness tour guide, a rock climber and snowboarder, and I could totally see him sending me just what your son sent you. <laughs> and, uh, and both of our daughters also seem to have made their way very far away, mine in Toronto, which is close for her, actually, and yours in New Zealand, I assume that that was probably from New Zealand. Um, as a commissioner, I'll say that Commissioner Higginbotham is a man of few words, um, but he's careful and deliberate when he speaks, and his words are very well crafted, and I make sure that I not only listen, but I hear what you're saying. He's been a protector, and I know he appreciates the natural world around us. Um, long before I became a board member, a member of the public, um, I thank him for speaking up for our wetlands and protecting our environment in Hillsborough County. And I know, Commissioner, that you intend to have more time, as everyone has shared, uh, to enjoy and explore this beautiful world we have. And I wish you well always, but I hope that uh, you'll be open before you leave to catch a lunch at your favorite spot. And you can give me a few more tips on uh, um, how I can do better here uh, before you head out on all those wonderful adventures. Thank you. And also, uh, we're going to hear some words from Commissioner Miller. Are you still there? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. You have to speak really loud. It's, it does sound, it's hard to hear a little bit. Can you hear me at all now? Yes, it's much better. Hello? Yes. Can you hear me? 
Yes. Okay. Um, I wish I could have been there with you today, Al, but um, you know how my back is. We discussed this back quite a bit. And uh, the time came that I had to have surgery. And I really didn't know if I was going to be able to be on this call today. And I talked to staff about how I could get a few words to say to you. But fortunately enough, we were able to work it out that I could at least talk to you on the phone. Uh, I'm not going to go into the politics side of, of uh, Al and myself. I'm going to take a different side. Al Higgum, and I hope I can get through this. Al Higginbottom has a heart that's bigger than the universe and is made of gold. You know what he's been through. But in the eight years that I've been on this county commission, my wife has had breast cancer battle one time, and my daughter has battled cancer four different times. As a matter of fact, she's battling cancer right now. And yesterday I had a very difficult and tough day. And every time I talked to Al, his question was, is how is Gwen and how is Lejeune? And he never knew how much that meant to me because in this business we're in, you know, Al is a Republican from Plant City and I'm a, a Democrat from East Tampa. A lot of people think we wouldn't even speak to each other. But every time he saw me, he asked me, how was Gwen and how was Lejeune? And he did something one day that just sent tears to my eyes and to my daughter's eyes. He sent her a bouquet of flowers when she was in the hospital battling cancer one time. And she called me and she said, Dad, Commissioner Al Hagenbotham sent me some flowers. I said, because that's the kind of person he is. He has a heart of gold. It's big as all outdoors. He doesn't care about the political part of the gym. It's about caring about the person. And Al, you don't know what that meant to her, and you don't know what that meant to me. I'm going to miss you. You've been a friend. You've been a confidant. You ask about my family, how you find my family is going, and I ask about yours. But that gesture you made that day, the gestures you made all the other times, will always be in my heart. I love you. I love you, my brother. Thank you, Les. Um, Christine, Mike, do either of you want to say a few words? I'll, I'll be very brief and just say it's been my honor to have worked with Al for Al as part of the county attorney's office since 2006 when he was elected. And uh, during this past year, I've gotten to know him uh, even more and learned about his um, delightful sense of humor, his love of the outdoors and adventure, and the love of his family shines through whenever you talk to him. And I've learned a lot from you, Al, and I'm going to miss you, and I wish you and Devin much adventure and love in the future. Yes, so um, when I was appointed county administrator uh, back in the <laughs> dark ages, uh, you were the one who negotiated the contract with me, and I think you were chair at the time, and so you really helped guide me from the very beginning. And I'm very appreciative of, of, your, of your wisdom and, and your mentorship. Um, and I guess I can say this now that you're leaving, that I really enjoyed our briefings for the board meetings because we spent most of our time talking about uh, dogs, <laughs> uh, fishing, and what else? Uh, plants. So we did talk about the agenda, so don't get me wrong, but it was, it was, it was great fun, so I, I'm going to miss that, I'm going to miss you. Also on behalf of, of my organization, I know that uh, they're going to miss you as well. They've enjoyed working with you, they appreciate the respect that you've shown them and, and the support. So uh, I will miss you, and uh, I will be calling you for more briefings though, yes. so, <laughs> while you're on the road, it's in my contract. <laughs> so thank you again for, for all you've done for me and, and also to Devin, wherever she is. There she is. <laughs> and I wish you uh, fun thank and you. enjoyment on your, the next phase of your journey. Thank you very much. Can I see it? Yes. Right. Please. Else? There is. Do you want the rest of the people? Uh, let me let them and then, okay. yeah. Okay. We do have a few guests.
um, that I'd like to say farewell also. Is Art Savage still here? Okay. Art, yes. Come on up. He is the Dean of the Tampa Bay Consular Corps. And on behalf of the Honorary Councils and Councils Generals who are here today, Mr. Savage is here. Um, and welcome to our County Commission meeting. And please start your remarks. Thank you very much, Sandy. And good afternoon, everybody. Al, hello there. Um, Sandy introduced me. Uh, I'm the Honorary Consul to Norway and Denmark and the Dean of the Consular Corps. And I have behind me, um, we've got Norma Henning from Germany. She's the Honorary Consul of Germany. John Charles Faust from uh, the Honorary Consul of France. And we've got Juan Carlos Ibera from Peru and Deborah Wilkinson, who's heading the International Protocol Office that Al has been such a great supporter of. In 2004, Mayor Iorio established the Mayor's Global Business Council. Uh, and that cu accumulated into, among other things, the formation of the city's first protocol and diplomacy office. Through that office, Commissioner Higginbotham had the vision that Hillsborough County needed to be at the helm of that initiative. In 2010, he became very involved. The commissioner went full speed ahead, and during his years representing the Tampa Bay Trade and Protocol Council, he met and visited with over 34 countries. He met ambassadors, prime ministers, uh, visited embassies, consul generals, and other diplomatic offices to bring a larger international footprint to Hillsborough County. Because of the establishment of the Tampa Bay Trade and Protocol Council and Commissioner Higginbotham's support, our consular corps has grown from 12 consuls to 30. And honorary consuls uh, in this region uh, span all the way down to Miami and represent countries such as Austria, Brazil, Canada, the Czech Republic, Denmark, El Salvador, Estonia, France, Germany, Greece, Haiti, Honduras, Hungary, Iceland, Ireland, Italy, Japan, Lithuania, Liberia, Luxembourg, Mexico, Monaco, the Netherlands, Norway, Panama, Peru, Russia, Spain, Switzerland, and Uganda. These countries also represent trade commissioners and other diplomats that have been part of Hillsborough County and several county sister city relationships such as Ireland, Barbados, and India. We also owe Commissioner Higginbotham a great deal for securing our protocol office and working with each of you, Administrator Merrill, and the county's economic development agency for consular corps and other international affairs. This is important and has been recognized not only internationally but nationally. At this time, I'd like to present Commissioner Higginbotham with a copy of a book I wrote with uh, Rodney Kite Powell, the curator of the History Center, titled Tampa Bay's Waterfront, Its History and Develop Development as a small token of appreciation and wish him the very best in his well-earned well retirement. This is where international trade started and, and we thought this token would be appropriate. Okay, would you all like to come up and gather up here for a photo? I offered to help him up one time and I almost got one of those canes upside my head. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, and you'll be right in front of us. Okay.
Now we have our, our last presentation is Naitish Shetty, and she is president of the Tampa Cricket League. Hello. Hello. Respected commissioners and officers of Hillsborough County, dear Commissioner Mr. Al Higginbotham, I know you, you asked me to call you Al all the time, but I cannot just do that because of your aura. <laughs> On behalf of Tampa Cricket League, I would like to thank Hillsborough County Administration for giving us an opportunity to speak on this great occasion of celebrating Mr. Al Higginbotham's 12 years of public service as a commissioner. From the bottom of our hearts, we would like to thank and express our gratification to Mr. Al and his office for giving us an identity and also making us successful in our mission of developing and spreading the sport of cricket in Tampa Bay and surrounding areas. Just to give you a brief introduction on cricket, it's one of the Commonwealth sports which is played internationally by more than 105 countries. We use a bat and a ball, but you need a level playing area which is called a pitch with 11 players on one team and skills needed similar to baseball and the ground is pretty much like an oval field instead of a diamond field in baseball. Um, I would like to few, say a few words about how it all started in Tampa. We were a small sports league with just about eight to ten teams and we were struggling to conduct our games because of a dedicated cricketing facility. That's when we met Mr. Commissioner at the Federation of India Associations event and requested him to help us out with some dedicated facility. He promised to look into it. He really took that to his heart and there was no looking back from there. He put his team to look at all the possibilities and found an unused baseball facility at Sefner where they put in a pitch which is very much essential to play the sport, and Tampa Cricket League started conducting games there. That time onwards, he was there constantly visiting the facility to watch the games. Also, I should mention, though he was in a very respected position, he never made us feel that way, and he mixed with the players, and sat with the players on the floor in a small covered area, as there was no seating area, and used to watch the game with us. Such was his uh, humility and genuine love for the sport and the community. It gave us the confidence and will to add more teams and further improve the league. At the same time, he and his office looked for avenues to further develop the facility. And in 2015, they got, they got us a dedicated cricket complex, which is a first of its kind in Florida, I should say. With the facility, we started adding kids and youth programs. At present, we have. 30 uh, kids from 6 to 16 year old and 40 adult teams. Uh, each team has a roster of 23 players that would come to about 1,860 cricket players participating in an year long tournament which goes every week and every weekday it will be full. And with that, the businesses in the area also, you know, they started appreciating the facility as they see more traffic coming in and out of that area and a lot of IT professionals who would have played this sport when they were growing up also preferred to stay back in Tampa and that helped you know, some of those businesses which were employing them. Let's all give a big round of applause to Al for, and his office for this great contribution. With Mr. Commissioner stepping away from his public life, I'm sure we will miss his charm and leadership. But we promise to continue with his and county's vision of developing this sport by keeping his ideology of honesty, openness, empathy as our guiding force. We again genuinely from the bottom of our hearts would like to say thank you to you, Mr. Al Higginbottom. I cannot call you Al, I'm sorry. <laughs> and wish you all the best in your future endeavor. And I like to call upon our committee to give you just a small uh, no, memento and also a t-shirt of Tampa Cricket League and this hat for you. And <laughs> thank you all. 
And while they're delivering that, um, go ahead, you can bring it up and stay up here because we're going to do a photo. Um, I do want to say, um, Al, because of your leadership with establishing the cricket field at Evans Park, uh, we felt the field was the best place to mark your legacy. So last week, they were at work. Your wife, Devin, your aides, and the Parks and Rec staff met with the Tampa Cricket League to plant a tree at the cricket field. As you can see, the plaque, they're showing it on the screen now. The plaque placed at the tree says, planted in honor of Al Higginbotham, Hillsborough County Commissioner, served 2006 to 2018, and it says, just call me Al. <laughs> and we wanted to make one more change to mark your time here with Hillsborough County. We'll bring an agenda item next month to rename Evans Park to Commissioner Al Higginbotham Park. And also, while we're standing, uh, Mike and Christine, do you want to come up and we'll take a group photo, uh, just us and Al. <clears throat> Thank you, guys. Spread this way a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Victor, come over here on this side. Okay. Where are you going, Victor? Right here? Great. Yes, right now. You can, the floor is yours. Testing, testing. What most people don't know in this room is that uh, when I was sworn in 12 years ago and came up here and took my seat at the podium, that's when I learned that I was supposed to make remarks. And as I was, as I was gathering myself, the only thing that came to mind was testing. So I thought I would start it and end it that way. Um, but it's I told a number of folks, I said, I really didn't want to come today because I, uh, I'm not real keen on the, on the acknowledgement. I appreciate all the kind words that were said, uh, but I have a better understanding of the spirit of Elvis Presley. Uh, after today, I will be cited in the community. I will be seen, um, and I have not left the building. Uh, but that last day will be on uh, the 19th, and between now and then, I have some housekeeping. I don't know if John Lyons is still here. Uh, and if, yep, you don't have to come up, but I'm going to leave this for you. I call this the file of fixes. Um, <laughs> over my 12 years, I've had potholes and things, that, uh, drainage problems on my road. And I was not going to call. Better come get this, John. And. It, and I was not going to call the county to come fix a pothole on my road. And so I casually mentioned to Chip Fletcher at, that uh, there was, I was, had asphalt in the back of my car, and I was going home to fill in the potholes. And Chip got all flustered, as you know, <laughs> Chip can do. And he, he, he said, there's probably an ordinance or something that prevents you from being that. And then later on, John comes in my office, 
And he said, asked me, he said, are you fixing potholes on your street? And I said, I have been since I was elected to office. And when I got home that day, all the potholes on my road had been filled in. So I've, I've got some extra asphalt patch. And this is true, uh, if, if you'd like it. Uh, and, but it was such an appropriate day to come in and, and see a, a memo from Bonnie, the surveillance of the solid waste credit. And I really mean that because uh, I enjoy that. I found it a challenge to understand the, the, the financing process that we have here in government and, and uh, proud of the AAA rating. And I will read it before uh, I get out of here. And John, I'll need that file back. But um, There's a, a picture that I asked to, to go up before, just get ready for it, but it was truly seven years ago that uh, I made the decision not to run, and it's led to a lot of lifestyle changes already, uh, and I so much miss uh, my family and spending time with them, and as you kind of gather through here, and I didn't know people noticed, uh, I, I miss being outdoors, I miss uh, nature, and that was in great part for my uh, decision and uh, it was reconfirmed a couple of years ago at Christmas when both kids came in and Devin was there and they said, are you truly going to keep your word on this and, and not run? And that was uh, the decision. Um, seven years ago, I quit buying suits uh, and because I was going to have a lifestyle change. And I remember I was sitting next to Mr. GQ in one of the commission meetings. That's Les Miller. And I looked down at the cuffs on my uh, jacket that I happened to have. It was this one, actually. And it was frayed, and you could see the white backing material in the jacket. And I hopped up from the, the commission meeting here, went to my office, and you can look at it. And I got a permanent marker, and I colored it in because I was not going to buy another suit because I don't plan to wear another one uh, in the foreseeable future. Um, the, someone mentioned earlier today, he said, it looks like you're letting your hair grow out now that you're retiring. Well, I'm not striving for a, a, a comb over. The truth of the matter is that I was going to have my hair cut last night, but I, in preparing for this lifestyle change uh, and getting ready for it, I went uh, offshore fishing yesterday, and we were out about 30 miles and made our first stop to fish and went to start the motor again, and the boat wouldn't start. And uh, we were about seven hours overdue coming in. We had to find a mechanic and then a, a, a tow boat to bring us in, but that's why I missed my haircut. Um, but uh, rest assured, I'll get that taken care of soon. But uh, the other ch change that we have here is that, uh, if I could bring this picture up now, our dog Penny is going to be taking the journey with us, but this is Tinkerbell, or better known as Tink. Uh, and in May, she's going to be looking for a happy home. And if there's someone out there who would like a, a great cat, she's four years old, she's housebroken, housebroken. Uh, we'll be heartbroken, but uh, I thought I could take this is a point of personal privilege to say we've got a great cat if somebody's looking for a kitty. That's good. Um, I never planned to run for office and uh, have enjoyed the time. The comment that I'm, I read in the paper online that I had said that I'm in poor health and that I'm not going to uh, run for re-election. Well, the truth of the matter is that I'm disabled, I'm slow, I'm deliberate. But just because you're disabled doesn't mean you're poor health. So I don't know how that got misinterpreted, but it certainly did. I don't feel comfortable about talking about my uh, successes, and so today I'm not. Uh, I didn't aspire to come into the room to be the smartest person. And what I did truly do is hope that you would look into my eyes and see my heart. And when you looked into them, you'd know that I care. More than anything, you know what I cared about what we're working on together here in Hillsborough County, and what we did together as a team. You knew I was prepared when you looked into my eyes, and you knew I was open. And thanks to that team that I had with me, and I had no idea you guys were going to be here, uh, you know, Seth and Matt and Jess and Andy and Ellie and Deanna. Uh, it was uh, Jess and Deanna who opened shop uh, when we started this. And there was an opening back in August, and Deanna, I thought it would be very appropriate to come back. And uh, I'm a better person for having, uh, having known you and knowing you. And Ellie is going on to do bigger and better things. And I'm so glad uh, that uh, you have been a part of my life uh, and a part of uh, the family uh, for Devin and the kids and I as well. Um, 
to the board members and folks here at the county center, uh, it's important to be first honest with yourself. Because if you're not honest with yourself, you can't be honest with God. You can't be honest with others. Uh, don't violate other people's confidence. When someone confides in you, your word is your bond. Remember, please remember that your ambition, whether it's in this boardroom or outside, does go and can go hand in hand with decency. Always try and influence others through your example. I took this journey on uh, kind of adhering to the hiker's creed, and there's seven principles to the hiker's creed. Plan ahead and be prepared. Uh, my life experiences is, I believe it was a Victor who talked about things that happened to you, whether it was my accident or other business experiences, uh, got me ready for the votes that we made and the things we did here. Uh, I had an opponent in a campaign who said that I was a career politician. Well, I was only in politics, uh, elected official for 12 years. Been many, many more years beyond that that I had been uh, self-employed. Uh, second uh, principle, travel and camp on durable surfaces. And I kind of liken that to the county center and the staff here because they provided me a, a, a durable surface and a foundation to help me go out and be a more effective uh, commissioner and public servant. When I was running for office back in 06, I came down to the county center because I was going to meet staff members and find out what they were doing wrong and expose it all. And after about the third or fourth staff person I met with, I knew I was wrong that there are great people here in this county center that are here to, to help the citizens, to advise the commissioners on issues that are important uh, to each and every one of us. Uh, next principle, uh, dispose of waste properly. To me, that was how I handle uh, the county budget because too often, if it's not your money, you're wasteful with it. You don't, you're not mindful of how it's spent. And to me, that was so important that we, we handle the taxpayers' money uh, appropriately. And along the way, when you saw something that was wrong, you tied it up, you corrected it. You leave what you find. Again, applies to our tax money. You've, the next two uh, combine uh, fire, be careful with fire, and respect wildlife. I think I was always uh, timely when I returned the calls of the media because I was respectful of what they would do. And I knew that if it's something that was not good, that it would get out of hand like a wildfire. And to my colleagues and those thinking about coming in, when you have a tough issue, don't put that call off. Stay ahead of it. Be considerate of others. Be considerate of visitors. That to me was what represents our constituent service. And again, the people who worked not for me, but with me in the office, uh, I think we, we were considerate to visitors, and we did a good job uh, handling cases and handling problems with people. I'm going to close with this, and I didn't know how I didn't know how I was perceived here, uh, being a lover of outdoors. Or I didn't know that anybody remembered that I said, "Look into my eyes and see my heart." But there was, but there was a, a something that Walt Whitman wrote that I'll close with this, and it reads, after you've exhausted what there is in business, politics, conviviality, and so on, we have found that none of these finally satisfy or permanently wear. What remains? Nature remains. To bring out from their uh, torpid recesses the affinities of a man or woman with the open air, the trees, the fields, the changes of season, the sun by day, and the stars of the heaven by night." End quote. And with that, I'm returning to nature. Dev and I are going to travel for a couple of years until we fi figure out where we're going to live. I bid you all a fond farewell and uh, know that we'll be visiting between now and the spring when we move on. Thank you so much. Silly, sit down.
Oh, Al, you are a remarkable, such a respectful man. Um, we're going to miss you a lot. We love you very much. You. And you've helped me so much when I first came on the board. It was hard transition from state to local politics and government. And uh, you really helped a lot. So I, from my heart, I appreciate you, thank you very sir. much. Thank you, thank you um, all. I want to thank you all for coming to this farewell ceremony for our, our county commissioner, Al Higginbotham. Um, other groups, like I would say the old aides, they should come up and take photos. Anybody else can come up and take a photo with Al. There is a um, um, little, uh, what, do you, what are we calling it? <laughs> I've arranged so much. Um, cake and punch is out in the hallway, uh, right outside the boardroom. So a little reception. Thank you all very much. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Victor.